Hey everyone, Johnny Galt coming at you from Augusta, Georgia. Got a nice little video here for you guys. This has been a long time in the making. Uh, it's taken a long time for me to finally make the decision to make this video. We initially were going to do the how to uh, practice your shading, kind of like the liner video we made, but initially we ended up receiving so many death threats that we decided not to do it. And now that I've been in the industry for quite a while, you know, I've kind of realized a lot of these guys are just trying to intimidate me because they don't want me to teach people this, but uh, you know what, fuck them. So what I'm going to be teaching today is a technique to improve your shading. Uh, before I jump into it, I'm going to give some of the best pointers that I can to you guys and please follow them very closely. One of the big things is if you're going to go ahead and do shading on skin or you're going to work with something, use black. Like when you're actually shading in a tattoo, use your black start with your black. I see a mistake that people make constantly where they, they think that gray wash is what you shade with because it has the term gray wash or shading ink in it sometimes. And it's a huge mistake. It's kind of like misinformation that goes out. But uh, to get straight into this little video here, right here, I'm going to be showing you how to make this little gem right here. Um, I know a lot of people are trying to say, no, no, you should patent this and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to do that. I want to make something that anybody can do, anybody can use, and they can learn the art form. So what I went ahead and did is I took an ordinary tattoo tube where the stem actually still fits, or I have a rear stem on it, removed the tip that was sitting on the actual stem, and I took a number eight velvet touch flat shader, and I cut the end off here. Now, sometimes it's not uh, as big as you need it to be, to fit in the actual tube. So you can put a little bit of gaffer's tape or anything right there, and then you tighten it from the rear, right here, and you make sure that it faces out. That's one of the big things you gotta do. You gotta make sure that this guy right here sits out to the front like an ordinary tattoo machine shader. Here's what an ordinary shader looks like when it's set up, the way it's sitting out. And if you actually look at it, it looks, the way it's shaped, it's just like a brush. When you actually sit here and you look at the two, this is what you're doing. This is what we're basically gonna show you how to do here. Now, these right here sitting on the, uh, on the table, these are actually prints that I have set up. This is cold pressed uh, watercolor paper that you can buy and we have the outlines actually drawn on already set up. Uh, I do prints for people if you actually wanna get a hold of some prints. But I have the uh, dotted lines out here and this is how I train people to learn where to put their gray wash down or where to start basically shading traditional tattoos. And we have some other stuff. We have some ordinary moths here. We just have ordinary roses, but it's a great way to start. This is actually how I, uh, how I got better at making my wind bars because I just couldn't shade or blend out wind bars correctly when I first started and I had so much trouble with them. I love doing Japanese, but my wind bars and my fucking uh, waves were just bunk as shit. Like they just did not look the way that they should. Um, what you want to go ahead and do is you want to set your whole setup with a clip cord and everything, foot pedal, so that when you run it, it's just like tattooing. Now, keep a couple things in mind. Uh, it's not like skin in the way that you can rotate the uh, painting around or the actual watercolor. Uh, in real life, if you have a piece sitting and you want to approach it from the back side, you actually have to move over to that side and work your way in. And I'm gonna be covering two of the basic strokes today that you're gonna to need to learn. Uh, one is gonna be a forward only shovel stroke and the other one is gonna be an overlapping sweeping stroke. One is used for blending out the uh, stippled gray wash or uh, stippled, uh, basically stippled shading. Uh, gray wash is a technical term when you knock your uh, black down. One of the things you do is you have black in your inkwell with a live needle. You tap it in the water, you run it in the tube, and it mixes so it lightens it up because sometimes you just don't want straight black blended out towards the end when you're uh, lifting up the end of your mag. But what I'm gonna go ahead and teach, and bear with me, I haven't done this in years. I haven't practiced on this because I haven't had a need to actually do this. But when you're working with this, you pick up your black from the actual palette, which is just ordinary watercolor paints. None of this stuff's really expensive. That's one of the things that people don't get. I like to work my way up, and you can test it right here in the paper, so we have the black. And when you're working, you set it down just like you're gonna work, and you hit your foot pedal, and work your way up. Now, a forward-only stroke is when you're slowly moving one direction forward, and going around the edge here. Now, you can see that this is a little bit lighter, and then when you start, if it's a little light, 
you just pick up a little bit more black. This is actually something you do in tattooing. When you've realized you've got a little bit too much uh, water or your color's a little bit too light or anything, you can run back through and pick up a little bit more. And here's something that I like. Here's something I really wanted to show. When I actually go through here, let me get my fucking head in this, trying to sit here and paint from like a half a mile away with my face on this. This is an effect that happens in live tattooing. Okay, I really wanted to show this. This right here at the base, these striations that show up, this is why watercolor is so much like actual tattooing because the needles here on this bar will create very similar striations to the actual hair of the brush when it's moving forward. It creates a very similar effect. And that's what you're doing when you do a forward shovel stroke. When you go out straight and you lift it, that's the actual effect that you're creating. People don't realize that just by half lifting the front of your mag, you can create that beautiful stippled effect, which is what you're is exactly what you're looking for. People don't really seem to you know, pay attention to stuff like that. And you end up seeing, when it begins to dry, we have these little dotted lines around the edge. What's really great about watercolor is as you're working these out, if you don't like where it's sitting at, you can go and bust it down with a little bit of water. Make sure you don't have too much. And you can go back and you can just blend this shit out of it. Just like this. Like you didn't like where it was, you go back, hit it with some water. Now, the way that this is a lot like tattooing is that once you've gone over it or you've gone too dark, you can't go back. That, that's really what I like about this. That's why I really enjoy getting to play with some of the watercolor stuff. And then, you know, you can kind of run all over the place. You can go up here and you like the edges where you're gonna layer in your, uh, your mid-tones. But this is where you would use gray wash. So you have the top of this leaf, what I'd be doing is I'd be actually putting some gray down on each side, like this, at the top of the leaves. Like actual gray wash. And then when I'm done with that, when I come back in and do the color phase, I would add uh, like, a, like a green, kind of like this one, I would add some uh, forest green to it and it creates a differentiation in the shade. When you pair this type of shading with the use of negative space, things really start to look fantastic. You get to learn, you know, quite a bit of just like, it just had to layer in correct tattooing colors. And I'm gonna show you guys the shovel stroke real quick, which is for laying down solid ass black. Like, let's say I got a real dark point um, at the center of this flower right here that I gotta work in. And because it's right at the center, I need it to be black. I'm actually going to hold the mag, set the skin, and I'm gonna go in an overlapping W pattern that's actually going to hard pack. That's the way that you would use this mag right here if you're trying to hard pack color. Now keep in mind, let the machine do the work, take your time. If you're using a Chinese knockoff machine and you feel like the ink's not going in well, that, that just happens. That's kind of just a part of you know, learning where and how to use your machines. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit this little guy right here in the center. And you can see how freaking dark that little tiny bit came out. You can see how dark it is right there in the center. Now, I know I'm over here just like fucking this thing up and making it look like shit, but it's because I'm just showing basic strokes and I'm running through it to kind of give you guys an idea of, you know, where to start and how to work. I don't really care how these prints turn up because they I can make a thousand of these and actually run them. And you can do them however you want. This is what's really great about these. These are just great for practice. You don't have to do them perfect. You don't have to do them fucking amazing. You know, we just go through and just try out new stuff, you know? We're just sit here and fuck around. You know? You could sit here and you could totally fuck this guy up. Like go over it like that, have a bunch of problems, no worries. You know why? It's not somebody's skin. That's what this comes down to right here. This is a great source of learning how to actually work, how to tattoo, how to do things with the weight of the machine, with pressing the pedal and doing stuff. And you don't have to go nuts. You really don't have to go crazy. You can sit here and you can just layer in your color and it's easy, it's fun. You know, you actually get to play with some of these. And when you end up doing some nice prints, you know what you get to do with them? 
You get to finish them, spray them with some sealant, and you drop them in your portfolio. That's the exact point we're trying to get at for you guys here. So uh, if you guys have any questions about making these, I'm just making the actual tube itself. Um, I, I can show you guys a little bit of stuff, but for those who've been wondering, uh, this is you know my first time doing watercolor in about three years since uh, I use the technique to get a little bit better. But for those that are wondering, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Shoot me a question in the comment box. If you need prints or anything coming up, you'd like to buy some, let me know. Other than that, uh, happy holidays, you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for the views. And I really hope this video helps anybody who needs any kind of assistance with learning how to shade because this can teach you all kinds of different shadings. I mean, for traditional tattooing, as far as that goes. When it comes to more realistic shading and stuff, don't try to push this technique with it because the layering techniques of photorealism are a little bit more like graphite work. So th those are more complex. I have those in my photorealism videos on how to work and layer in using shovel strokes, which is repeated shovel where you layer in one section of gray wash, layer in another section of gray wash while using like bug pin needles and stuff. But once again, thanks for watching guys. I hope this video helped. You guys take it easy.